go. Ugh. It's official. I, mm, I can eat a bowl of cereal, excuse me, in 42 seconds. Oh dear. G'day, how are you? I'm Steve Hay. Welcome to Woodworking Masterclass or A Day in the Shed with Steve. Oh, I, I was down here getting all prepared. And then Bob comes down and looks at me, where's my breakfast? And I go, oh, I haven't had breakfast yet. So I tore up to the house, literally, when I put the timer on for three minutes. Grabbed some cereal, woofed it down my throat. Mmm. Mmm, mmm. Oh, and now I'm breathless. I haven't got done what I wanted to get done, so it doesn't matter. We'll do it anyway. Who have we got in the house this morning? Oh, dear. Good morning, Ray. Good morning, Stephen. Louise, good morning. Parcel should arrive today. She, she posted it yesterday. Not Trevor's she, my she. Chad, good morning, everybody. Uh, John, good morning. Do you have the chillings with you? Now, yeah, how's my memory? Ruby, Elijah, Kyle and Hope. There you go. If you're watching, good on you. I hope you're feeling a little bit better and you're going to have a little bit of fun today. That would be awesome. Oh, hi, oh, I'm waiting. My breakfast is about there. It's still working its way down. <laughs> Morning, Trevor. <laughs> Morning, Devon. Uh, it hasn't started yet. No, I had to have my breakfast. Um, Ian, good. Oh, good. Uh, Jeff. Good morning, Jeff. How was everyone? Everyone here is in room one, two, three, and four. Say hello. Hello, rooms one, two, three, and four. Oh, Ooh, who's in the and? Isn't that rooms one, two, three, four? There's no and in there? I, I don't know. I'm being pedantic. I'm Ray. I'm highly suspicious of Trevor being here for 32 days straight. Uh, one has to question whether she's still alive. Yeah, I don't know. You don't know what restraints are on the door that's holding him in. Uh, good morning, Ian. Good morning, Jeff. Again, I, was, I said that, haven't I? That's it, Mark. Good day, mate. Whoa, we just took a big jump there. Good day, mate. How are you? There you go. Oh, look at that. Everyone remembers them. Those kids are in in, bla in what is it? Embossed in our hearts. We hit the like button because we like Stephen Sue. Well, I did say to Sue, you're coming down. You yeah, got to. They like you better than me. Oh, all right then. She's got to go to the shop. She's doing schoolwork with the little chillins. The little chillins are the grandkids at the moment. Oh, dear. And Noah just said he hopes he doesn't have the same teacher next year. <laughs> You've got to love them, don't you? G'day, Andy. Yeah, yeah, he can eat quicker. He, here he comes. Look at this. Right on cue, the buff is here. He's, <laughs> that's, oh, I've got to show you, with my phone? Got to show you this. You reckon that thing is not a spoilt mongrel? Oh, I'm getting messages. Who's sending me messages? I don't like that when I get messages. I like to find it on my, oh, that's all right. I spoke to them last night. I like to find it on my own without being, told. you got a message, stop what you're doing, it's important. Someone wants to scam you from South Africa. Um, what am I looking for? Oh, gallery. All right. Here you go. Look, last night it got down to 11. There's nothing else, mate. If you had a saddle or put it on, you could take it back up to the house, but you can't, can you? That's it. All done. It hit 11 degrees last night. Now, Bob will not get on his bed unless I make it. If it's got any wrinkles in it, he stands there and goes <laughs> like that until get off your bed and he gets off and then I straighten it, take all the creases out and then he gets on and goes Boom. Last night, true story, la last night I made his bed, put him on there and he goes <laughs> and he's just about to get into bed myself and he comes in the room and looks at me. I said, what? He turns around, gets back on his bed and looks at me. This is what he wanted. This is what he wanted. Don't you tell me I don't spoil that mutt. Look. Look at that. 
He wanted, because it was 11 degrees, he wanted to have a blankie over him so he wouldn't get cold. <laughs> Is that, I think the other one was, yeah, that was just as he was settling down, but I thought the other photo was better. <laughs> he's, a, he's a good pup. He is. I, I love him to bits. He really is. Let me go and put that over there so it doesn't interfere with me day. Ah, oh, so that's Bob. Rooms 115. Oh, all right. Room 15. 1, 15, 210, 3, 5, 4. That's two. 35 watching. You've doubled me audience already, John. I should put you in charge of my marketing expertise. Oh, good morning. How are you? Oh, dear. Terry, g'day, mate. How you going? Got a copy of the complete woodworker on order. Isn't that wonderful? <laughs> it is just, it is a really interesting read. Not only that, it, it takes cuts through all the... And takes you right back. <laughs> Base. I just remember we got chillins watching, so I didn't say. Um, no, it just takes you right back to basics. But remember, and this is important, what we all forget, we go, oh, they're the old ways. No! When those books came out, they were the cutting edge of technology. They weren't going, oh, let's get back to the Stone Age. No, they were working with what was the cutting edge of technology in those, in those times. I think Matheson... Uh, um, <laughs> yeah, I'm going to get shot. Uh, Matheson either started, they, I know they had a significant change in 1860, but I think they started making planes in Glasgow around the 1830s. And that was a whole new thing. It, you know, it was awesome. You could get different sized planes and what have you. So what they were doing those days was the CNC and the saw stop of today, basically. But if we can learn what they did, then we can... Get back to basics, which is a good thing. Oh, look, don't get me wrong. I love the trinkets and I love all the nice little things, the foot brake on the bandsaw and the drum sander and um, uh, bobbin sanders and routers. I love that. But also like the idea that I know how to do it by hand if I have to. And if I have a choice, that's what I'll do. I'm fine, Steve. Had problems with my computer, but okay. Well, that's good. Doesn't matter. Computers can get fixed, mate, but you've got to look after your own health. Speaking of computers, I've got mine back and loaded all my stuff on it. It's really good. Oh, hang on. <laughs> I'll just say a few more highs and I'll, I'll give you a, a semi rant for the day. George, hi, mate. How are you? Uh, the little girls love him. Ruby asked if he could, we could have him. Bob, you can, but I tell you what, the freight sending him over, sending a bar of chocolate to Canada was $30 and that was only 200 grams. He weighs 36 kilos. But he would enjoy the sleep for a couple of days. <sighs> I think they're talking about the dog, John, not me. <laughs> oh, that's nice. I appreciate that, Mark. Anyway, yeah, my, I told you about my drone. I um, put... Uh, Newton's law of physics to the test with it and wanted to see if it would fall out of the sky, and it did. And so eventually I bought another drone, which I was explaining yesterday, and the blinking thing wouldn't work. Really ticked off. Out of the box, magnetic, what was it? Magnetic field. And I'm going, I've got two acres. I'm in the middle of a paddock. There is no metal around me. No, it won't start. Check app. Check app. Yeah. App's okay. Must configure. What are they? Orientate compass. Okay. Orientate compass. App not connected. Mm -hmm. So anyway, I drove, I don't know, 20 miles yesterday to the drone shop. It was weird. It really was. Big shopping centre. And I kid you not, I don't think I counted six people in there. See, I can put that down as essential because I use it for filming. There would be flat out six people. There was one guy in the shop. I walked in and the shop attendant said, wow, customers have just increased by 100%. <laughs> he was a good young fella. He got me sorted. But what happened was I plugged it in and I had to register it. The manual's that thick. Got nothing about registering it. So anyway, I tried to register it and then I couldn't get the hot foot spot working on the phone. So I finally figured that out. And I said, right, now what do I do here? 
And I, this is, this, this was just it. Oh, he said, you pull that down, that over there. And, and when that comes up, just get rid of that, do this and pull that down. Press that and it's set. <laughs> I mean, that was fast enough, but there was my drone. There was I. There was him. So I couldn't see what he was doing anyway. I said, oh, I appreciate that. Thanks, mate. Brilliant. Could you show me what you did? Yeah, you just pull that down, cross that over, tick that and slide that. If that comes up, just ignore it. Then you've got to do this and there you go. <laughs> That's the case. Someone know what they're doing, but they don't know how to get anyone else to know what they're doing so they can do it themselves. Anyway, brought it home just on dusk and it worked. I took it up to about three metres, quick lap around the yard, came back. I said, That's it, in the box. So I might... Um, I don't know, I might fly it this afternoon and see how we go. But yeah, just manuals, they're useless, aren't they? Absolutely useless. Tell you, really interesting stuff that you don't need to know, but what is it when the red light, yellow light, green light flash? Nowhere in the manual. Whew. Anyway, I'm, what, where, am I still talking? I mean, I'm still talking. Very hard to get Stephen's partner. Yeah, I, I knew, John. Ruby, I don't think you could feed him. I would love to have the money to buy enough food to see if I could satisfy his appetite. Last night, yesterday, when I went to the drone shop, I was feeling a bit soft, so I thought, oh, I'll call in the butchers on the way home, and I bought him a brisket, a great big set of bones out of a cow. He turns up, met me, because I hadn't driven the truck for nearly two months, so I thought I'll take the truck for a run and... Um, charge the battery up and this, that and the other. <laughs> Besides that, fuel's that cheap. I can afford to drive it now. Came back, Bob's there. Here you go. What would you get for me? Did you have a good day out? I missed you. Here, open the door and let me in. So I got in the truck, gave him this big bit of brisket. And he went, oh, down the back, yeah, scoffing down this bit of brisket. And then it was close to six o'clock. So he comes over and says, oh, by the way, it's dinner time. You haven't fed me yet. I said, just give you a brisket. No, that doesn't count because if it's not in the bowl, it's not classed as food. All right. Put a handful of food in there. Next thing, Susie's up feeding the grandkids. He's in there. Oh, what's happening here? Humans are having food. I'll have some of this. They finish. He gets disgruntled, goes outside, starts eating his food. I start having a bowl of curry prawns and rice. He's by me. He says, oh, you got any spare? Because I'm a bit peckish. So, no, nah, he just, he's a bottomless dog, that one. Oh, now I've got that. Ah, I got that off my chest. Uh, oh, look, I appreciate the sentiment, Mark. I do. Uh, I walked into a Telstra shop once. They had zero people in it. I did just because they were looked so lonely. <laughs> that was a few years. <laughs> oh, dear. And I bet you they told you to take a number and wait until it was called. <laughs> oh, dear. Oh, dear. You're going to get some timber. What are you going to get? Jeff, what sort? Some nice cura walnut or rock maple or cherry? What's out? Who's out? He's, he's, he's still trying out. Oh. She is still trying out my man. <laughs> Mate, I reckon she's got you on automatic. Don't worry about manual. Mm. Oh. Okay, now what I want to do today, which I was starting to do, till my lovely dog came in and said, Oi, you haven't had breakfast yet, and don't forget, I'll have what you don't eat and don't eat at all. Um, I was trying to work out how to do this centre dust panel, and I thought um, we'll play around with hinges. We've got to fit the doors. And uh, what I want to do with the hinges is I'm, I'm thinking... I quite like, I just had a rat through my drawer with all my um, hinges and fittings and handles and what have you, and I haven't got any tarnished brass, but I do like the antique styled handles. So I was um and ahhing with that one, but then I don't have two of those. And I don't really want to put a lock on it, and it looks really naff if you've got a, uh, a handle with a keyhole and no lock. And then I found these beautiful little antiqued 
teardrops, and I've got two of those, so I think they will look really quite nice poked in there. I'll see if I can do it. Woo -doo -doo -doo. Poked in there like that. They look quite nice. And <clears throat> you could go metal hinges. Uh, <laughs> you do this. I mean um, steel hinges, which, yeah, they look nice. But I have this affinity with brass, so I'm going to go brass hinges. And I don't have any antique ones, so these are as brand spank as shiny ones. So what we'll do, we'll fit them, but I'll show you how you can tarnish them to make them look antiqued, old and weathered. So we'll have a crack of that down the, down the road. And I want to work out this dust cover strip down here, which is what I was doing. I was in full swing too. And then I looked at the clock and it was quarter to 10. And I thought, oh, I better get some stuff ready. So that's when I had to run around and get those hinges and do some other bits and pieces. So I think first of all, we might clear the decks here. Uh, no, what we, we might have a go, we might have a go. Oh, there's different sorts of hinges too. You can get external hinges um, if you're not confident doing doing um, re recessed hinges, it is quite acceptable to use these, and you get quite a nice Effect. And that, that goes on the outside of the cupboard. And there's a, another one, a slightly better quality one. Uh, doesn't particularly suit the style that I want to do. If I had a gate hinge, a blackened gate hinge, that could go on the style here and come across here. That would all look all right. But even it's a bit too countryfied for what I'm looking for. So I'm going to use just ordinary butt hinges. You can get hairline hinges which you don't have to rebate, but soon we're going to go a little bit authentic. I thought I'd use butt hinges. So let me just clear the decks here, catch up, and we'll see what's happening. It's funny. <laughs> when I, oh, excuse me. Oh, that's what happens when you bolt your cereal down. Uh, when I went to fly my drone yesterday, I couldn't find the cable anywhere. There's a, a data cable. There's a couple of outlet ports you can use. And I prefer using the one on the side of the controller because I seem to get much better reaction time. I don't know why, but it's just the way it is. Could not find the adapter. Couldn't find it anywhere. I thought, oh, oh well. So I ended up flying. Let's put this back. I ended up flying using another outlet in the front of the remote control but I just don't like using that and just before I came on air I went outside to get something and I noticed um, some plastic pegs and they were the pegs I use to hold my helipad down when it lifts off and when it comes home and I looked around and there's the adapter with the cord lying on the grass and must have been when I smashed the other one I just ran in fact, I left my tablet out there for two days. I'd forgotten where that was, and I found that in the backyard. So there you go. It's just, oh, it's just so exciting. Oh. Oh, all right. And, yeah, we're going to use the router today. Oh, joy. And it's a router bit I've never used before. It's a bullnose bit. Normally, I use a bullnose bit with... A bit, ah, no, that's not it. With a bearing on it. Um, but I think it's gone tadas because I can't find it anywhere. So we'll just use a, that's a bull, hello, Bob. That's a bull nose bit. Very small, and that's what I do cock beating with, with a bearing on it. So the one I've got in the machine at the moment doesn't have the bearing, so I'm going to have to space it using the fence. That'll be exciting. 
I don't, I don't know how that's going to work out. Still haven't worked out what I'm going to do with the glazing bars, but I don't have to make a decision on that right away. So I won't. There's enough work we can do in the meantime. I think we've finished cutting glass, so I can put on the glass cutting stuff away. Don't, um, yeah, don't need that for the moment. So pop that up there. Ow! First pinch of the day. What the heck's that? I love it when I find stuff in, the, in my tool box. I can't remember what they were. Put that there. That one can go there. No, I'll keep a pencil. They can go up there. It's, it's been a big, big day for the young fella. Have a look at it. <laughs> you right there, Bob? Can we get a tail wag? Bob, can we get a tail wag? Food? Hey, he must be tired. Not even chocolate. Hang on, wait a minute. I might have some chocolate wrapper here. They might have a difference between the sound of... No, it's gone too. Well, the sound of a plastic bag and the sound of a chocolate wrapper. <sighs> All right. Oh, and there are other things you can put on cabinets as well. It's when you put little hasps on there. That's, uh, you can put a lock on it and that's got a little hasp and hook. But I don't want them on this particular cabinet, so I'll not going to use them. Take this off for a tick. Um, it's good when you've actually started to work on them because then you can work out which side's up and which side's down and which is left and which is right. So first things first, I think I'm going to knock these horns off. So we might go over to the table saw and do that. That's, remember I said yesterday, with um, when you're doing doors, if you leave an extra bit at the top like that, it creates more strength in here when you're cutting your tenons out, even if you're going to do them on a router, still have that horn there because it gives you a little bit more strength. I think the um, mortise went to about there, so that's about six mil or a quarter of an inch, whereas with this extra bit, I've got an extra quarter of an inch, which gives it strength. What have we got? New people in the house. Oh, it's all happening today. I saw dust all over my screen. Oh, just cedar. Western red cedar. That's still good. Cindy, hello from Georgia. G'day. Cindy, what kind of wood would you recommend using for the top of a woodworking table? Look, it depends. In all honesty, the cheapest wood you can find, if you get something for nothing, use that. I'm not one of these people that gets precious about the wood bench. It's the work you do on the bench, not the woodwork in the bench, if you might get my drift. This is just some lumps of old hardwood put together. It's, um, if you have a look at it, it's all, it's all got big splits down here and splits over here and it's just a manky old bit of, I don't know, it might be spotted gum or, no, it's not spotted gum. I don't know, some sort of hardwood, but it's all cracked and stained and broken and fallen to bits. But the main thing is, it gives me a level that I can work on. You know, I would say, oh, I'll go and get some rock maple. Yeah, you make beautiful benches out of rock maple. Yeah, you do. But bear in mind, it's gonna get absolutely ruined. 
This one over here is white oak, which were offcuts for um, something or other. I know you can't see much of it. Oh, you might. Hang on. Let's see if I can. I'm all, I'm all tied up here. Here we go. Okay, this has got to be. Oh. Uh, crikey, I don't know. Um, let me work it out. Uh, 98. It's got to be 20 years old, this bench. And it's nothing spectacular. In fact, if you have a look at. Look, it's got bits of hardwood there. It's old railway sleeper for the legs, which are all broken. Got a bit of pine up underneath. Which way are we going? There you go. It's got a pine in there as a stretcher. Um, got some pine along the bottom. So it's just made up of literally stuff that I had lying around. So, yeah. Um, I, w I would prefer the people were impressed with the work that comes off the bench than the work that went into the bench. Because all it is, it's um, underlined the name work. That's what it is. I've got another one over there. Here we go. We'll go for walkies. I'll show you another one. This is a, a really cheap <coughs> construction. Where are we? There we go. Really. No, he's not a cheap construction. I mean, how cheap and nasty do you want to get? That's chipboard on top. Um, they're pine legs, really roughly put together. Uh, it's on a bit of plywood with chipboard on top. The reason it's on the plywood, it, the chipboard's on the plywood is it was too low for what I wanted. And that's got a very heavy book press on it, scroll saw, vacuum pump down the back. And yeah, look, I'd use that. Uh, whatever. I think the cheapest and easiest way, if you really want to get in, is throw a sheet of plywood on top. Make sure that you've got gussets and struts underneath to support it. But it would be good even second-hand plywood. Doesn't matter. So that, that's me. But I mean, you talk to other people and they'll get very... Um, you know, see their eyes glaze over. And they'll start talking European beach and... Uh, white oak, cherry, maple, what else have we got? Um, num, num, num. Lace wood, you know, whatever. Pfft. Nah, whatever you got, that'll do. Huh. Was, that a, was that a good answer? It was long-winded, wasn't it, Cindy? But I hope they gave you an idea. Oh. Old, uh, old cabinet are uh, angled so that the doors close without binding. That's, that's what I was talking about yesterday. Um, you have a look at the inside of the doors and inside here, they're actually, they've got a chamfer on them going from the front back so they don't bind when you close them. What I'm going to do with this one, I'm actually leaving a gap between them. <coughs> I'm going to leave a gap between them and then put a cover strip onto that, and then attach it to the door the same way, which is one of the methods of attaching cock beading to drawers. So that's the one I've got to make up. I could quite easily just get a, um, a rounded over bullnose stick and glue it on there, but it's tacky, and eventually, you know, it can come off. So what I want to do is an inter... I've got to get my teeth around this one. Integrate... <laughs> integrated, that's it integrated piece that I can glue onto this style which will have the bull nose here and allow for the door to come in underneath. But first of all, I've got to knock the horns off so we, we can do that. Uh, dear. Oh, the been on the lay this morning, turned the camp a large piece came off and hit my face shield, then hit the roof. Where it went from there, who knows? Well, it's Camp Laurel. Who cares? <laughs> <laughs> Honestly, Trevor, I you asked Theo, I hated this stuff, but now I've started using it. It's nice. I mean, I still don't particularly like the wood, 
Um, but that's personal reasons. But it does everything right. I mean, it stains nicely, it cuts cleanly, it's stable. Uh, it smells all right. It's just, I don't know, something about it. So not only will we be using the monster, though, we'll be using it with an unknown bit. Oh, that's it. Now, what possibly could go wrong? <clears throat> G'day, Tony. How are you? <laughs> oh, dear, oh, dear. Did, did you have a chance to see me Macca's rant? <laughs> oh, it's, it's good for my blood pressure. I tell you, I love it. <laughs> you can just let fly. Oh, bum, bum, ba -dum, ba -dum. Is he getting Tim Tams again? I had, I had a delightful experience yesterday. I called into the cake shop on the way home with a shopping centre that's just opened up. And the lady had a nine-year-old daughter behind the till. Well, when she overcomes her natural shyness, she will... She could rattle on worse than I can. She was unbelievable. And I said, hey, I'll have five of those at $2 each. How much is that? Quick, work it out in your head. I reckon it's $7.50. She said, no, it's $10. <laughs> and her mum was standing behind me with a big grin on her face. Oh, dear. Yeah, that, that's one of the most important things, Jeff or Cindy. When it's it's built, you want it to be substantial. You want weight in it. You don't want it, you know, when you go whack like that and you, you hit something, whether your blade's blunt or there's a knot or something there, you don't want this end of the bench lifting up. And when you're pounding something, cutting mortises or uh, just chiseling out, you don't want it skating all around the, the workbench. That's why I like minimum 3v3s, but I prefer 4v4s for the legs. And if you can get 6v6s, use 6v6s. <laughs> yeah, I fire up pretty quick, Tony, but I, I do calm down just as quick. Now, in all honesty, it takes a lot to get me riled. You ask, you ask my wife and you ask my kids. It takes me a lot, but boy, when I get past that red line on the taco, look out. But I come down very, very quickly. And if you do the wrong thing by me, kids, you know you've had a visit from Steve, I tell you. <laughs> There's a few bosses and school teachers that have had that experience. Susie's bad enough. But that's what the kids say, don't upset Mama Bear, for the goodness sake. Don't royal Papa Bear. <laughs> All right, let's go and cut these off. Um, now, what I'm going to do first of all is just knock the horns off and get pretty close to these rails. Then, when I'm going to even it off, whatever I'm going to do, I'm going to take it off the top. Now don't, well, yeah, you can ask why. Normally in a normal cabinet, a well-built cabinet, if you look at the doors, if they're on the ground, your bottom rail should be, I say should, should be bigger than your top rail. And the reason for that is optics. When you're looking at a door, you look at that amount of rail about here, and then when you look down to the floor, if you've got the same amount of rail on the floor, it looks skinny, it looks out of proportion, whereas if it's wider on the bottom, then you've got that pleasing balance. The same with this, I could get away with this being equal because it's going on the wall. And the argument could be that if it's going on the wall, the top one should be bigger than the small one. I find not at eye level. If it's much higher up, yes, the top one is slightly bigger than the bottom one to give it that balance. But when you're looking at it at eye level like that, yeah, it looks wrong. So first of all, we'll knock the horns off of these. So we'll go over to... <laughs> hey, do you ever wonder what 
a dog would look like if he fell out of an aeroplane without a parachute. That's, that's what they look like when they hit the ground. <laughs> oh, oh, Bob. What are we going to do with you, eh, mate? What do you reckon? It's all right, you stay there. It's all good. So good. Let me just move this chair out of the way. Oh, you're right, mate. Ah. That, that bottle of red wine's going to get broken. Now, how am I going to do this? I don't I've got to get that compressor fixed. As soon as I get... <coughs> Excuse me, I'm a frog in my throat this morning. As soon as I get breathing space and clean that bench off behind me, I can then move it and pull that compressor out. Creep up on this slowly. As soon as I can use a long fence, rather than the miter box, I much prefer to use a long fence. Okay, so, so I already started to make that cut by accident. We might as well finish it, I reckon. That'll get us out of out of the soup. Always wait until that blade stops. Okay, here we go. Mm. 
nie mu. No. Don't forget to take it off the top. All right. Before I bring that camera back, we'll just have a look, see, and look at that. Clean all that muck off. No, did he? No, did he? Do. If you do cut it too, too, um, too much, don't lose any sleep over it. Just there's, there's so many things you can do. You can pack it out and make a feature out of it. You make sure you do the same to the top and the bottom. Put a bit of beading on there to cover it up. You can um, drop this frame down a little bit to, to take up the shortfall. You can put a strip along the bottom here like a little ledge, which will then make that gap smaller. So it's, it's all sorts of things you can do. So don't get too precious if it doesn't quite work out the way you want it. It doesn't matter. This has just got a skerrick to come off there. I might use a hand plane to do that. Okay, now that's way too tight, as you can tell. So, what we'll do is we'll play with this middle bit here, I think. Oh, if I took half a... I was just thinking. I was thinking. Oh, it doesn't matter, does it? It doesn't matter. Because what I'm going to do with this cover strip, it's going to allow me to have a couple of mil and I... I'll be honest, I haven't done... I've never done this to a door before. I do things all different ways, but I just enjoy the challenge of it. So if we get a cover strip over here, then it doesn't matter. Oh. Yeah, okay. So if I take it out of here, because my concern is if I take it off of these outside styles here, then that's going to be different to the rails, isn't it? Yes. But if I take it off of here... When I put that cover strip over the middle, you're not going to notice one little bit. So that's what I'll do. How much do I want off? That is the question. See that? That's, that's what we're talking about. That is really, really tight. Now to open that, it's going to be sprung. Oh! Now, I can't shut this door with this one closed. doesn't work, or the other way. The only way you can do it is you put them both together. You can see those two meeting here, and then you get, and it'll shut. So to prevent that, what you actually do is where they meet, you plane that off, and... So they're not touching there, they're only touching at the front. We 
might do that just for the fun of it, because I'm going to rip that off anyway, aren't I? Am I? No. But that's it. Um, all right, I'm still thinking about this. I'm going to have a read what I think. Read what I think. Ah. Uh, New member! We've got a new member that's retracted. Message retracted. Hang on, let me see. Oh. Well, if someone just became a member, thank you so much. Hard energy out here. I believe Ian signed up the other day and I, I didn't see him. Didn't um, say thank you to him too, but there was Ian. It wasn't you, Ian. It was another Ian. So, hard energy out to you too. Thank you very much. Um... Yeah, I don't want to do that. I want to have, because we did ship lap on the backboards, but I want to have a raised um, bead in the middle. So that's what I'm doing that one for. That was Ian, thanks. Well, there you go. <laughs> He's getting picked on that much time. He's left. No. Oh, Barry. It was Barry. Well, thanks very much, Barry. I appreciate that. Mm. Thank you, Barry. I appreciate that. Two thumbs up and hard energy. There you go. Mm. <laughs> yeah, because I, I better not have a pint while I'm doing the woodwork. This, this crowd have seen what I do when I don't have a drink. What tune was that, Tony? Oh, how I joined what together? The doors, they're just tongue in, um, tongue in groove. Mortis and Tannen. G'day, Randy, how are you? Oh, mate, I'll be, I'll be over there. I'll be at your place. I'll start swimming this afternoon. <clears throat> oh, yeah, you do that, Roscoe. Thank you. I appreciate that. But make sure they're nice and cold. And I reckon three have just about set me up. Hello, I hear footsteps. G'day, Dave. How are you, mate? Thank you for dropping in. It is. It is not Bob either. How are you? You've got nothing. You don't, why you got nothing? Hmm? I've been busy doing Oh, busy doing what? I'll tell you what. Housework, Here we go. teaching, uh, putting up with kids. Yeah, but what have you been doing? Uh -huh. Didn't give me a hard time. No. You little short fat granny getting a hard time. <laughs> Talking to teachers. Oh, yeah, no way. Yeah, Because I've got teachers in there, so I've got to be nice. But these are just these teachers at this particular school. I'm putting the air con on. It's starting to get a bit, a bit warm, isn't it? Uh -huh. so, no, no scones either. No, it's because I'm... Oh, I know, I got curry prawns last night. That was nice. You did. We did, we did. And there's a did. tiny little bit left, which might do you for lunch. Hey, Steve, how do you order your glass? Uh, funny, funny you should ask it. Or should I tell them? Yeah, well. I, well He's got a what happened was, I don't know if you know, but there was a, sh a, a per business. Yes, called Masters several years ago. They tried to take on Bunnings, which is a big shed hardware place here, and I think they were they're connected to Lowe's in America. No, no, Woolworths in Australia and Lowe's yeah. in America. Anyway, when they were closing down. Um, all the staff were pretty disgruntled and I just bought a heap of stuff. Well, I hadn't bought anything. They, they actually sponsored me. So anything I wanted, I sort of got. Um, but when things turned bad, they were just selling stuff at ridiculous prices. For example, I um, was talking to the guy that came to wind the company up 
And he said, do you like Tasmanian oak? I said, no, not really. He said, oh, do you do? I said, no, nah, not the interest. He said, I'll give you 90% off. I said, I'll take every stick you've got. So I've got a heap of Tassie oak in there. And <clears throat> then when I was leaving, there was two pallets of glass. There was 2 mil, 3 mil, 4 mil, 5 mil and glass. All 900 by 600. So that's 2 foot by 6 foot. And I said to the young bloke, he was only a young bloke, mate, how much for the glass? He said, three bucks. I said, what, three bucks a sheet? No, three bucks a pack. <laughs> so I got two pallets of glass for about, I don't know, 60 bucks or 80 bucks. Or something. something ridiculous. So that's how I ordered my glass. And at the moment, can I get to my glass? No, why can't I get to my glass? Because all your crap's on top. Oh, excuse me. Who's, whose stuff is on top of it? Yours. Why is it on? Okay, well, I'll get there, Trev. I've learned from you. Because it's because. all rags. Yeah, but, 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 but why is it there? Because he's building my other sewing room. And we have to move all my rubbish out of the way. Is there any still in the way? Yeah, because I want to get the glass. It's all on top of the glass. Don't you. Don't even go there. No. Don't even go there. You could get something you've made. Yeah, because the people's like seeing what you've done. Okay, I'll go, go, I'll go well, get another quilt. Or don't, you do anything. Cause, or else they think I've stolen all your sewing machines. <laughs> no. <laughs> all right, I'll go get some. All right then. But the kids going all right? How are they going with schoolwork? Yeah, they're going all right. And what do they do on this afternoon for science, English, and mathematics? We're cooking. <laughs> I'll give her a mic one of these days. We're <laughs> cooking chocolate crackle slice with marshmallow over the top. Yeah, but they have to organise it all and go up and buy the stuff. Yes. And go okay. and wash a few cars so they can afford to <laughs> get the money to buy the stuff. Oh, uh, and then we saw a thing the other day. I don't know, somebody put up. It was John. It was John. I'm pretty okay. sure it was John in Canada. Okay, um, on peanut butter cheesecake. So he's truly here, found one on Golden Seal. No, no, John put that one up too. Oh, well, there you go. See, it's a conspiracy. John, John you're an angel, because now I've got to cook. No, you're not, because I'm getting fat. I can't fit in my apron. Look at that. Twins. See, <laughs> with all this thing of not being able to go out much, we're all going. Yeah, what is it? We're staying at home to flatten the curve, not fatten the curve. Isn't that yours, <laughs> Trevor? All right, see you in a little bit, darling. She'll be back. Mate, rolling pins don't have to be sharp to hurt you. I, I can say that for a fact. All right, now what am I going to do? I was going to cut some off of this. Okay, so I don't know how much. It doesn't matter. Well, let, let's go over to the router. And we'll set that up, and then Susie will be back, and then we'll have a crack. This is, this is a bit that I've got, this new bit here. Is that the one? There you go. It's a bullnose bit, but doesn't have, whoop, doesn't have a uh, bearing on the top, which is a bit of a nuisance. So I'm going to have to run it along that way because I want this face edge to match up with the face on the styles of the doors. So I'm going to set that up. Chucky will be home soon. Hey, speaking of which, where's Her Royal Highness? She hasn't popped in yet. We'll have to check on her. I hope she's all right. Oh, that could have hurt if my finger was under it. I'm just got to loosen this stuff off here. What do you do? Um, yeah, I don't know. Take that off. I've got to... Where 
gives me light. Let me get a light. I know this is this is one of those perfect examples of where everything works out perfectly in your head. But when you get to the bench, it might not work as well. well that's not going to be very big at all. Okay. I haven't seen Max either. He might be out doing the shopping. Drop that down. Okay. I... I really don't know. I've got to get that compressor fixed. How this is going to work. But we will give it a shot. These Jasmine fingers are good too, they hold your job in nicely, but I'm just, I think actually, I won't use them just yet, I'll take a, a slight cut and see what happens. Hello my darling. Hello my dear. I, 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 you, what did you get? You went all, all silly, you went all out. You got that green thing happening. Hang on, let me just do this, and then we can have a calming moment. Uh, let's go. Okay, that wasn't a full cut, now we're going for a full cut. It's a pretty good profile. The good thing about a new cutter, it's sharp. All right, let's go and have a look at Susie's sensational sewing segment. Hello. Hello. Get down. Oh, Ooh, that's good. Oh. What you got? You asked for it. You asked for it, and here it is. Baby oh. bib. <laughs> That's me. No, that's Trevor. Let's go. Goes over the head. Won't fit over mine. Tiny but mighty. Oh, no, I thought they were tiny but nice. It's tiny but not mighty. There you go. Okay. Little chillings. What else Little you got chillings. there? We have placemats and coasters. Oh, this, this is for Halloween. Oh, they hang up, do they? Yeah, How cool are they, little pumpkins? Oh, I, lo I love that fabric. Yeah. It's beautiful, that one. Is that one of my fabrics? I think it is, yeah. What do 
plenty of me. Well, all the nice ones are mine. Oh, all right. You know that. Yeah. Even, <laughs> doesn't matter who bought them. Yeah. So, they, they applicate, are they? Oh, yeah, applicate yeah. on there. There you go. And okay. what else? What else okay. you got? What else you got? We have a cock quilt. Another cock quilt. Oh, he's a puck. The chillins in hospital were love then. Who wanted, who wanted Bob? Was that Hope or Ruby? There you go. <laughs> Can you move out your way? That's it. And we put a bit of tension on it. Mm -hmm. So It's funny, isn't it? Because you're looking there and you're on this side. Yeah. And it's, it's, yeah. There and you I'm go. Good. And it's got dots on the back. Mm. Oh, speaking of dots, here he comes. Yeah. And I've just been hit up. Have you? <laughs> to do some charity work to oh. send over to another country that have just had a cyclone through it. And you're not going to do it? And tell the people why you're not going to do it. Because you do stuff for people around here. Yes, absolutely. So. Susie went down one day, didn't you? You went down to the beach um, on the Gold Coast. There's a lot of homeless people down there. And she took a whole stack of quilts down there with her and gave them away. Didn't give them to a charity, she went up to homeless people said, in winter and said, would you like a quilt? Pick one. Yep. And they, she reckoned they were all crying. They were, yep. for sure. So. You know, there's so many people out there and, you know, we had a, a friend who said, oh, yeah, people are homeless because that's what they choose. I went, <laughs> I don't think so. <laughs> yeah, no, it's, so that's what I want to put on there. Mm. I've got to work out how to do it. I think I did. Did I do that the wrong way? That's going up that way. I oh, know, that's the right way. So we will continue. What do we get? Sue says, John says he likes your pumpkins. <laughs> Thank you. Uh, Jeff. Oh, there, there. What did Jeffrey do? Is he doing? What's he doing? I'm going to get up here. The story's going to start. Is that Max's <laughs> playing HR? Yeah, no, that sounds good. That sounds good. Uh, we'll tell her that. Mm. All the digits survived. Yeah, there you go. Everyone say hello to Sue. So, yeah, I don't know who's in there. Before yesterday, there was Ruby, Elijah, Kyle and Hope, but there's 27 people or something like that watching now. Oh, Tony yeah. says, noise. Kids. Trevor said g'day. Ray says baby bib or mother bib. <laughs> baby bib. <laughs> which I've got a, quite a few more to make. Because we've got another grandchildren's coming. Apparently. My mother needs to wear a bib. She's always getting food on the... Oh, you should see Susie eat... Eat what? Apple turnovers in bed. Oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Bob's... <laughs> I'm going, you're not getting it. Oh, yeah, but they're good, aren't they? They are. They are. They're, they're nice. So I like them. Uh, actually, we did have to make, um, you had to make some adult bibs too yeah, for a young yeah. chap that, um, I think he had MS or something. Yeah, yeah. cerebral palsy. Yeah, so um, she made all these kick, I can't say that now because kids are watching, but all these wonderful Trendy sayings, and uh, yeah, he loved them apparently. Big smile. Um, best thing about the blanket was when it. What? When it covered Steve's face. <laughs> <laughs> That's nice. Hello, Jeff. How are you? Oh, dear. Mm. Oh, do they want you to knock? Knock some out too, John. So you got chest of drawers, now you've got to make all the linen to go in the drawers. <laughs> oh dear. Or is that the bibs? Mm. Oh, Max, we, we started a rumour that you'd gone over to visit Her Royal Highness because Brunella's not on and you weren't on. And so I'm not going to say Ray started it, but someone had to start it. <laughs> G'day, David B. How are you, mate? No, it's too late. It's what stays on happens on the net stays on the net. Thirty-seven now watching. You're international. That's it. See, that's my darling. Ah, oh, well. Nothing. You look as if you need to go nine eyes. 
I think they need to go to the shop and buy some stuff and don't get hassled by children. What, to buy you stuff? <laughs> I bought the stuff I bought back from the... Can you come over this way a bit? There you go, so we're in the middle of the screen. Went, went to the bakery yesterday. What are those things called? Pizza breads. Big yeah. pizza breads like that. I bought one of those each for them. There's a bag of finger buns, a bag of scroll buns, three cream buns and a pull apart. And I think the pull apart's the only bit that's left because I started eating that. Mm. And then they still front up for tea. Well, it's for dinner, man. I reckon about 10 o'clock Anthony asks that question. Gets out of bed at 5 to 10, has breakfast at 3 minutes to 10, at 2 minutes past 10. What's for tea, man? Yeah. Hey, hollow legs. I'd like to see him and Bob in an eating contest. I reckon Anthony would win. Yeah, oh, I, 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 I reckon... No, nah, Bob would get the speed. He did have the speed, yeah. but I think Anthony would have the staying power. Probably. Well, yeah. <laughs> anyway, guys, we'll see you tomorrow when I'll bring something else. That's it. You, I think you should go and have a rest because you're standing very tired. Your back's giving you a jip. Um, I'll put some DP on it later. Yeah. Oh, well, that TENS machine should be here soon. You got a new phone yesterday too, didn't I you? Did. I did. Yeah. And I rang up and she goes, hello? I said, g'day. Oh, it's you. I didn't know who it was. Because you hadn't put my phone number in your phone. I should have been the first one. Where's, how come have I kicked that? I've kicked that camera again, haven't I? All right, Chucky, see you in a bit. Oh, see, I'll cheat. This is, this is my little trick. See a bit of tape? When it's in the middle of my TV screen, I know that I'm, I'm then in the middle of the screen. Oh, dear, she's gone. Oh, okay. Well, this is the um, moulding that I made. And I want to put it on here. So I don't know what to do. Oh, actually, all right. <laughs> There's nothing like pressure. Trying to figure out how you're going to do something. Well, I'll, I'll think about that. What we might do whilst I'm thinking about that is we'll have a crack at tarnishing some brass. Um, you get nice shiny brass like this. And most of them nowadays do have a lacquer on them. So if you just rub that off, I'm just going to use a bit of 240 wet and dry. You can get it off with paint stripper, um, maybe uh, alcohol paint thinners, something like that. A wire brush, that'd be the other thing if I've got a wire brush around here somewhere. Let me have a look, see I've got that. But, oh, that'll do. If I've got a, if I've got a drill, we'll use that. Here you go. This isn't what I went to look for, but it should do the trick. What well, we might, we only might, might do half. And then we'll leave the other half. I won't do the back and then we'll see if we can tell the difference. Just want to scuff it up and get that lacquer off. If you want it shiny again, get a little bit of brass though and that'll buff up nicely. Bit of vinegar. Bit of salt. Yep, Sue used to shop at Woolies, but now she shops at Coles. And we put... Get the water out of that. The other one I, I haven't tried... I haven't tried it on brass, it works on metal, is mustard, so we, we might give that a go too. See which one we like. Okay. A little bit of vinegar 
in the bottle. A little bit of uh, salt. Put it in there. Give it a shake. See if we can dissolve it. Might have too much salt in there. No, that's all right. And we'll pop a hinge in. And oh, I didn't want it to close. It's closed. How am I going to get that out? And we'll just leave that. I don't know if we'll get much of a reaction in 40 minutes, but we will see. And I might try the mustard thing to give that a burl, which I might do on the back. Why do they put stickers on everything? <laughs> Could be a rant coming up about stickers. Okay, make sure that's cleanish. This is hot English mustard. We'll just bung it in there and see, see what happens. We'll leave those there. I wanted to do, poor, wanted to do that earlier in the stream, but oh, my tongue got in the way. Okay, so now I'm going to, what am I going to do? I'm going to cut this off. See, so the, the, the thickness of this is much thicker than the doors. So then this part here will ride over that. And I've just got to put that in there somehow or other. Um. All right. Let me run a saw cut down there and we'll, we will see what happens. You're not missing much, I'm just trying to set this saw up. Then I'll move the camera over. Those of you that are watching, if it looks like I don't know what I'm doing, you're absolutely right, but the idea of the stream is basically to invite you into my workshop as I'm working. So this situation I have at the moment is real because I'm trying to work something out.
That's all right, I think. So that's good. We can take that off. I'll come back over here and look at this again. So that goes to there. Okay. I cut that off to there. Then I can cut that there. I can do that later on. Okay. Back over to the saw. What I'm going to do now is cut this section out here and then rip that entire piece off and we'll see how we go. Let's see. Come up about a mil. Well, I'll move that. Okay. Now we're maybe starting to get somewhere. So this then can fit over there, like that. I'm going to trim this bit off here, and for that I think I'll use a, a plane. Um, ba -bum -bum. What's that? Um, yeah, okay. Move that back a bit. And I just want to take this bit off here. And oh, my block plane wasn't playing the game the other day, was it? Oh, let's try the old Stanley. 
need that. This is what you've got, Louise. You're a good plane. There's no point in trying to take a big lump off at once because it's only a very, very fragile bit of beading I've got there. That's not too bad. Might just give it a very, very soft touch with a hard sided piece of 120 just to take anything off that we might have left there, which feels like we didn't. Okay, so now that can get glued on to this part, this part here, and then we can play with the gap the other side. So this part here will go, this part here will go over the other door, but we've got at least a millimetre there we can play with as a gap. So, might just go and rip this bit off. And don't, don't have to have too much finesse about this. We just got to rip it off. so far this gets glued we're going to cut a bit off here and then glue this on and then we can cut away from here as much as we like so this door will actually come in underneath this bead so you won't see the gap because it'll be hidden underneath this bead So that's what we can do at the moment, is just glue that on. Um, now we might fit the, we'll fit the hinges first and we can do that later on and do some adjustments. Several ways you can fit hinges, I alluded to before. Let me have a chin wag. Uh, where are we up to? Uh, bum, ba, dum, bum. Well, what are we up to? 28, go back 10 minutes. Mm -hmm. Hey, Wesley, how are you? And if you're with him, g'day. You didn't lift much at all, Mark, I don't think. What's an overkill for brass hinge? Oh, I made two cheesecakes with chocolate topping for the pet. <gasps> mm. we, we should live closer. We should. Uh, 
Okay, good cause. Sometimes it doesn't work. Oh, okay. Bottom of his brother's name is Wesley. Are you with your brother, Randy? Well, g'day, Wesley. And Dean. Hey, Dean. Welcome to the workshop, mate. Thanks for dropping by. By the way, Steve, the tune was... Okay, I didn't even know that one came out. Or, or, well, I hope it's stuck in your head. I like that movie. Who was in that? Was that Danny DeVito and... Um, 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 oh, Tim the Tool Man. Whatever his name was. Tim, Tim Allen. Was it Tim Allen and Danny DeVito? I don't know. That was a good, good movie anyway. I just came up from my shop doing an all-day build. Hi, everyone. Oh, good on you, Dean. What are you building? Wesley tried coke and menthol. What? No, my, my son used to do that when he was in, in his younger days. He'd go and do silly things like that and see who could last the longer, longest. I'm playing around with doors at the moment, Dean. I'm just um, trying to tarnish some brass, which is going to take a couple of hours. I was hoping we'd get a, an effect sooner. Let me just have a look at this. In here, where's a pair of picker uppers? And it doesn't matter because I'm the only one that eats hot mustard in our house. Uh, leave it in there a bit longer. I, I just like, whoa. <laughs> I just like using, you know, everyday household things to do it. So I'm trying to tarnish some brass and I'm going to fit the brass to the, the hinges to this and I was making a decorative dust strip for the door all to go on this cabinet that we're trying to put together. Playing with household chemicals, that's it. See you Mark, catch you later mate. Well, you see, you're ahead of me there, Roscoe. I, I sort of know what I'm doing after I've made the mistake. I wish I did know before I made the mistake. <laughs> hey, David. Oh, I've said good day to you, haven't I? Well, it doesn't matter. I'll say good day twice. The other thing you can use is baking powder and super glue. Apparently it's good for fixing nuts in guitars. So if you've got bone nuts or something or other, it's good for fitting those out. Starbond, that's the people who sent me some stuff. I've got to find it so we can do some demos with that. Oh, good, mate, good. I put new ones in this morning. I'll, I'll double-check my pocket one. I went to try and get my other mic fixed. Yeah, no, it's all good. Um, no one's doing this, so I'll do it myself. We might, we might even crack a do on that live. There you go. Oh, okay, I'm up to there. Another six weeks. Well, you know what that means. I said if it goes over 30 days, I'm going to start building Susie's sewing room live. <laughs> That'll be fun. What kind of, um, hang on, let's, Dean, Steve, what kind type is your video system? You mean what I'm recording on? Um, several, I've got two, uh, I think they're 922 Logitech webcams and I use a Sony NX60 Pro Cam 
And then when I do normal videos that I up to do on YouTube, I generally use three Sony Pro cams, a Nikon, and these webcams. And I used to have a GoPro up here, but I, I've taken that down. Oh, well, it'll happen, Roscoe, I tell you, that was the deal. If this goes on for another 30 days, I'm desperately trying um, to get geared up so I can do an hour down here and an hour up in the wood-turning shed. So I can, because Susie's other sewing room is going to be next door to that. It's a, a bay of the shed. So I can take you for a tour around that when we go around the smithy. Oh, oh there you go, Dean. Well, I've, I've got a Sony lap mic or lav mic. And uh, the transmitter aerial broke. I've been trying to get it fixed and no one knows how to do it. So I rang a mate up who knows about these things yesterday and he said, easy peasy. Just got to have patience. Do you want me to do it? <laughs> I said, yeah, when you're allowed out. Okay. With these hinges, there's several ways of fitting a hinge. Uh, let's go that one. You can do them like that, which is really ugly, which you can't see. You can just put them in like that, it gives you a huge gap here. You can halve the gap and then that will give you a check out on the side of the cabinet and also on the side of the door like that and then your hinge line actually runs straight up the middle. But what I'm going to do, because I don't like in the size of cabinets or frames, I don't like having rebates. I like to have it so you get a straight line. So what I'm going to do is actually check out the entire depth of the hinge. It'd be nice to have a camera. Check out the entire depth of the hinge into the door style and then this part of the hinge just screws butt up to the edge like that. So if you broke a door or something, you take that out, that's going to be straight. It won't be um, marred in any way, shape or form. So check out to the full depth of the hinge in the door. It might be just under the full depth. I don't know. No, we'll do the full depth. And then we can butt screw it straight into here. So first things first, work your measurements out where you want it. If you have it equidistant, they look nice. Just to give you a few examples. If you had them... God, oh, doesn't want to play, does it? If you had them right up the top, like top and bottom like that, yeah, they'll still do the same job, but to me that's ugly. Um, so you just do whatever looks right. If you had them like that, yeah, they'd still work, but it doesn't look balanced. So I reckon that looks pretty good there. I don't even know what measurement that is. We will get a measuring tape and we'll find out. And of course you can do it with a router or you can do it with a hammer and chisel. So we might have a go with the hammer and chisel first. I don't care what that measurement is. I'll just make sure it's equal. There you go. So that's there. That's there. We'll mark there and there and there and there. Take that out, go over to the vice, change cameras, get some water. Do you want to go out, Bob? Hmm? Do you want to go out, big fella? There you go. So the downside when I've got the air conditioner on, he has to ask permission to leave. Whereas when I haven't got the air conditioner on, he just comes and goes as he likes. Pop 
I wonder if that'll fit. Well, oh, nearly. Not quite. I was hoping I could actually trick that into going in there, but it's not going to work. So we'll just have to have that. There for the moment. It's all right. We can cope. Much the same as when I did box hinges the other day. Not all hinges are the same. So if you get one hinge, don't assume that that is going to be the whole position and the size of every other hinge, because it's not. So I have it just so the um, pin, the hinge pin, is on this side. And we'll hold it there. So I wonder if we do it this way, if it'll hold. Ba -da -bum, ba -bum. We can always make it deeper if we need to, so I might just err on the side of caution with this one. And mark it. I, th I think I need my other glasses on. Because this is very blurry, so let me just get me Mr. Magoo's. If I can find it there. Hey, kids, remind me where I put my glasses when I can't find them. We're on. All right, there we go. Now, you could mark it that way, because I'm left-handed, but you make a bear's breakfast out of it. So always mark from the inside out. So if you do slip, you don't mark the other bit of timber. This one, I'm going to mark bottom. I'll put a B on there. And this is bottom left, so we'll go... B, L. So when I get this hinge, I know that it's the left-hand door. It is the bottom door, isn't it? It is the bottom. Yes, it's the bottom. Okay. So bottom left. I know that's this one here. And I'm going to go down the depth of that pin. If you go a little bit further, don't lose too much sleep because you can always pack it out. Where's the marking gauge? Use a marking gauge for this. It's a good thing about streaming, you know. You've got to make a decision. Whereas if I'm in the shed by myself, this will take forever. I mean, I know it's taking forever. But it'll take an even longer forever. All right, where's another... Where's another hinge? Here we go. So this is left top. So I just put L T. And then I know that one's that one there. Pop that there. Double check to make sure we got the right distance. You don't need to use verniers for this. You can use a marking gauge. In fact, that makes more sense, doesn't it? Let's use a marking gauge. Then we can get them all set up. That can go there. That one can go there. Oh, This one. 
Oh no. Providing we've got this one, which is this one, then we've actually got to use the hinge itself to get the right length because remember I said they're not necessarily all the same and in most cases they're not. Be careful when you're doing this you don't cut your fingers. There we go and the depth Is that one there? Let me just draw that in. Boom, 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 boom. Okay. So we'll do these ones with a hammer. What I'll do is put a little strip of timber on the bottom and the vise so it will absorb the shock of knocking things down. Where I'm going to be hammering, I'm going to have that in the centre of the vise, not off to the edge. Oh, I'm going to find Something that's thin enough. Oh, that one might do. That should do it. <clears throat> and it can sit there. That sits on the timber in the vise, providing it is narrow enough and it's right underneath where I'm going to be chopping out that mortise for the hinge. Where's the hammer? Much the same as when I'm cutting normal mortises I like having the bevel facing towards the end of it just from the first couple of cuts. So I'm coming in about a 64th of an inch from the end and now I'm just making little cuts all the way along. Oh, I know what else we could do. We might bring out the hand router in a little bit. I mean, this being oak too, it's pretty solid. And fragile. Meaning it will split. just define how far we're going in. And then we can start pairing this out. Once you got the initial cuts, it's easier because you've got reference marks to work from. But just this first one, you've got to be a bit careful.
We are nearly there. So I might have taken it out and tried chopping it down from the top. You can hear how crisp and crackly it is. <laughs> Hit a chisel with another chisel. Not a good plan. When you, when you work with timbers like this, it makes you appreciate it when you're working with cedar and maple and mahogany in it. Much nicer to work with. Okay. Oh, don't forget to, if you're new and you haven't done it already, Terry Gordon from h and Gordon Plains has put up a $300 gift voucher off of any of his tools for anyone that orders the catalogue online, which are free, from his website and answers a simple question. So you win either way, you get a catalogue, or you might win the... 300 bucks, open order. Um, and the question is, what does Terry make his Gigi planes out of? Okay, oh well, that's there, we just gotta tidy this up in here. Stick me glasses over. So if someone can whack up Terry's, whoop, that didn't sound good, email or website, if you're not sure what H&T Gordon tools look like, they're all, they're all Terry's planes and all these moulding planes, that tail vice, and Colin Clinton does all the um, marking gauges and squares that I use. So if nothing else, it's just nice to look at. Okay. Now we 
down to it. What I'll do is grab, grab the old, this isn't going to work I don't think. I might. The old woman's tooth rattle, or Stanley. 71. And that should bring us down to height. Or depth. You gotta which way you gotta watch which way the grain's going on this because that can just dive in and rip grain out you don't want ripped out, which was starting to happen with that. And wherever my hinge is gone, that should fit nicely in there. It doesn't fall out, so it's not too loose. So when I put that onto the cabinet, here, you see how that, I've got the hinge there, but I don't have any gap in the side here, I haven't cut into there. And yet that hinge is going to open really, really nicely, but we've saved the line here. That was just another way of doing it. We might do the next one with the router, it's going to be quicker. We'll do that. Let me have a chat. But that's to show how you do it by, with hand tools anyway. You never know. So I'll get a trim her out in a minute and we'll do that. Oh, let me have Tony's off, is she? Where are what are we on? 38? Oh gee whiz. I've been focused, haven't I? The world is ending. You should have been the bleeps in room 187 when the end of <laughs> That's awesome, John. I love it. Hey, mate, they might want to put me on staff. There you go. Motivation to get well. If you don't, you've got to put up with listening to Steve Hay every day. Oh, there you go, Max. Just finished. Oh, have you got yours? Have you got your way to go? No, it's good, isn't it? Steve, we need to set up your cameras through REM for this. So regardless of what you stream, we can all, we have all cameras for, hang on, RT server. So regardless of what you stream, we can have all cameras for the editing. Oh, well, that's what I normally do. Um, when I'm editing, Jeff, but when I'm doing streams, that's the best you're going to get. It's three cameras. Stephen, my catalogue just turned up in the mail today. Looks good. There you go. I'll let Terry know. Get a catalogue, Jeff. Are the wheel gauges that much better than the other? Yes, they are, but, but, I will say, now, who's, who's the other lefty? I was, I was talking to someone the other day, they left me a message. Um, oh, it'll come to me. Jim, Jim, Jim Blake left me a message. 
He, he was thankful that I did certain things a certain way because he's left-handed. And we have to think of the rules ourselves when you're left-handed. That is the biggest problem with these. I love these gauges. I really do. But they have a, um, a left-handed thread on them. Yeah, they have a left-handed thread. So if you're right-handed and you're using it and you're marking like that, it's going this way. Yeah, no, they're right-handed thread. It's going this way. So if you're marking towards you like that, you're always tightening this little screw here. You're tightening that. But being left-handed, I go the other way, and if it gets slightly loose, I go like that and the wheel wobbles and um, comes off. So what I've had to do is take them off, lock tighten them in. But look, I think they're a great gauge uh, for the price. If you really want the, you know, the Schmick ones, again, if you've got an H&D Gordon catalogue, you can have a look at one of those. It's a Colin Clinton handmade one. It's um, ebony and brass. They cost slightly more than the Veritas ones. But... These do a beautiful job too. I love these for, for big jobs. Really, really nice. You keep working, Colin. Catherine, make sure he works hard. There you go. <laughs> um, so, yes, no, I do. I like the wheel gauge. There are other wheel gauges around that I haven't used. I particularly like this type with the micrometer adjustment, not just, oh, that's close enough. With this, you can get close enough then you, what do you do? You lock that, which then it's got little rubber squeeze bearings or plastic thingies there that stop it from moving. But then you've got a micrometer adjustment on this screw thread here so you can get exactly where you want to go. Whereas I find with the wooden ones, if you want to just move it incrementally, it's, it, it's the number of taps that you put into it. See you, Tony. Jeff, speaking of aircon, Steve, I've got a massive day conductor system going in. The outdoor unit is like an HVAC. Well, there you go. Well, that's on your new shed. I'll tell you what, you'll enjoy it in summer, mate. I'll tell, I'll tell Terry to start cranking it up. <laughs> Are you referring to the quality of the photographs? <laughs> Brian, that is. Yeah, the thing is, the big difference between that and the Carpetech catalogue, those, those prices are pretty well fixed. The other catalogue, you get the catalogue and then all the prices have gone up. So you'd be buying something at a price that's in the catalogue and that's going to cost you more. There you go. Klingspore. Woodwork in the US had decent luck with it. Um, I like Klingspore. I think it's a terrific um, abrasive. I do have some around. I think some of my sheets are... Yeah, there you go. Some of my sheets are... Um, Clean spore, and I think I had some on my sand as well. Yeah, it's my favourite one, really. Those Nortons. I don't think you can go past it for value. <laughs> I just reading. I'll change. I'll tell Roscoe that one. Oh, no, no, that was, that was festival, yeah. No, nah. <laughs> not saying nothing. <laughs> Jeff's comment. If I have a festival, I'll have a workshop as tidy as Steve. <laughs> I'd hire someone to sweep the floor and use something else. Are we 
we there already? No, we're not, can't be. I'm going to do another one of these with a, a router before I go. See you, Randy. Have a good night or morning or whatever. I don't know. I get confused. Oh, there you go, Louise. Jacob, what's your favourite small project you like? Boxes, absolutely. Boxes, without a doubt. I just love boxes. I wish there was more, um, you know, uh, call for them. I just, I love making boxes. I think they're chiffic. Hang on, let me go and get a little router. Oh, if I can find it. Oh, CC, hopefully looking in this mess. Oh, there you go, this one bit. Oh, I don't know what bit it's got in there, but well, have a look, see. Oh, yeah, no, that'll do. It's not the bit I would like because it's too small, but it will do the job. It's got a real, really small bit in it. Um, I'm not going to have that on, I'll freehand it. And then I'll clean it up a little bit later. Okay, so we'll set up to this depth here. So we might go there. Can we go there? No, we'll go there. There you go. And that can go there. So just set it up to the depth of the other hole because we know the depth is right. And with this one, because I'm using a router, I'm actually going to draw a pencil line rather than a knife line. And that's only because then I can see it better. Okay, so I don't know if you can see that. Let me go. There you go. So I've got the right depth. All I have to do is route down to that. I must. George, if you're watching. I always say that. I don't know if he is watching, but he's a nice bloke. I've got him upside down. Good on you. I'll go that way then. There we go. And I, one thing I've found that you might find helpful down the track if you're using a router, you actually do have to plug it in and turn it on. There you go. And here we go. As you can tell, that is a heck of a lot quicker. I don't think it's as satisfying, but it definitely is quicker. But you always take the last bit out manually. couple of reasons. One is if you go into the corner with a router, you end up with a round corner and 
if you go over the line, that's it, you've gone over the line. Whereas by doing it just the last little bit by hand, it really doesn't take much, but it does give you a nice crisp finish. Make sure we get it all nice and square. And we can find the other hinge. Take that sticker off. All things being equal, that should fit in there nicely as well. There you go. Two hinges. They don't fall out, so that means you've got a good, nice, tight fit. And when we put them in there, it just looks so nice and clean, I think. And then all you've got to do is just screw these straight into there. We'll have a look, see if this is working. If not, I'll leave it in overnight. And we'll have a look tomorrow. Because it's only been about an hour. Yeah. Ah! No, we've got nothing yet, so we'll leave it in there a bit longer. Let's see how the mustard one's going. Where did me pick her up or as go? No, it doesn't seem to be having any effect on the mustard one, so we'll leave those in and we'll check them. I'm not going to lick my fingers. We'll, we'll check those tomorrow and see what happens. I'll finish off doing those other two hinges today and also glue this piece on here. So, which way does it go? There you go. That way, no. we'll glue that on and I'll work out how I'm gonna cut this. So by tomorrow, if I haven't done it, if it's not too complicated, I'll actually do it live so you can see exactly what I'm doing. But the idea is first, if I glue this onto here, then I'm not playing around on the saw with a small bit of timber because that's no fun being near a saw with a bit of timber or a router with a bit of timber that small. But by gluing this onto here, then I've got this whole door and I can play around with whatever I want to here, but I've got the safety of having all this material behind me, and that has to be planed off a little bit as well. So there you go. Let me have a chat, and I think that's about it. Before the boss comes down, I'm in trouble again. Oh, dear. <laughs> Never put a chuck on his head and tie Kids are off the bed now. Well, good night, kids. We'll catch you tomorrow. You have a good sleep. See you, David. Thanks for coming in. Take care, Jeff. I'll see you later.
Yeah, John, do you take a bow too, mate? That's right. Thank you for that. Uh, George. Uh, no, who was that? Um, Ian. Well, good night, George, as well. Oh, they'd be disappointed, John. They go, where's, where's that bloke? No, the bloke that's on the stream. No, not that cranky old man over there. <laughs> oh, dear, oh, dear, I love it. Oh, it does me heart good, it does, John. What's in the jars? Uh, one jar I've got uh, salt and vinegar, and supposedly it's meant to change the brass. And when I've done blacksmithing, if you put steel in mustard, you get a beautiful blue colour. So I'm just seeing if there's any reaction there. I'm tending to think not because it hasn't got any ferrous metal in it. But we will see. We'll have a look tomorrow. And, yeah, so I can darken the hinges so we can make this look more authentic. No, I, I don't know. I'll give ketchup a go too. We'll, we'll try. Yeah, oh, it's too cold for me to work a sweat up Darren, uh, Devon or else I would. Anyway, that's it. We've done, we've, we've done not much at all. Um, but as I've said before, I, I don't make apologies for it. This is uh, a day in the workshop for me. And if I have to sit and think and ponder and cogitate and work things out, that's what I've got to do. And oh, I just feel so <laughs> blessed that there are people in the world that are happy to watch me do it. Oh. So that's it. This is Steve pulling the... Is it, what's that, the duck? Where's duck? Did he come in? Oh, <laughs> Trevor duck. I thought, I thought it was the duck. Mr. Ducksworth. Haven't seen him for a while. Anyway, this is Steve pulling the shed door day and saying thanks for everyone that came in the chat room, joined in, got involved. It is a wonderful family you've created out there. Not me. You have created out there. And the messages, emails and other forms of communication that I'm getting from people out there, it really, really humbles me and touches my heart to think that good is coming out of what we're doing here by helping people take their mind off what's actually going on out there. So this is Steve pulling the shed door down and saying, remember to keep it sharp, but more importantly, keep it... <laughs> I've been doing this too long. <laughs> keep it in your mustard jar. No, keep it safe. Look after yourself. Be kind to each other. Exercise restraint. Find something interesting to do and see if you can do something a little bit better today than you did yesterday. But yeah, there's a challenge. And well, I look forward to having your company in the workshop, at the workbench tomorrow at the same time. Well, we'll do it all again, only totally differently. Till then, stay safe, be patient, God bless. See ya.